everybody uh, thanks for taking a couple minutes this morning to come check out input mapper and see what we have going on um, I have a real-life non input mapper project that's been uh, keeping my time pretty busy um, I'm up against a deadline on that so I haven't spent a whole lot of time on input mapper uh, but I did get a couple things uh, started at least and uh, I'll talk about that in a minute um, first, I'd like to talk about uh, the work that uh, Benjamin's doing over there on his camp. Um, you can follow him online. He's known as Nefarious. Uh, he's got a couple GitHubs and you know some uh, stuff that he's doing, um, stuff that directly inputs it, that directly impacts Input Mapper because uh, his drivers are what we use to uh, run the application and to pretty much make all the magic happen. Um, Input Mapper is pretty much just a UI and a tool set that interacts with the drivers that he writes. Um, but one of the issues that he's dealing with is the, uh, the cost of getting drivers signed. Um, previous versions of Windows, and especially Windows 10, require drivers to be signed and validated before Windows will allow them to be installed. And that's a safety, security feature that Windows put in place to you know, keep uh, just poorly written drivers out of Windows. Um, you guys remember the days of Windows XP and prior where you're getting blue screens every 10 minutes. And, you know, this is, this is the stuff that Microsoft has done to combat it. Um, and fortunately, it makes it really difficult for developers to get their stuff uh, signed and validated for Windows. And it also comes with a high uh, dollar cost um, up front to pay for a certificate for the signing. Um, so uh, right now he's paying for that stuff out of pocket, which you know isn't right, especially uh, seeing as how much we use it and actually we need it without his driver's input map or just wouldn't do anything. So uh, what we're going to do is starting today uh, for the next week, seven days, um, until I create this video again next week, um, every dollar, every penny that Input Mapper gets, uh, we're going to send directly over to Benjamin to help offset his costs. So, uh, pretty much like a you know seven-day marathon drive or whatever you want to call it. Um, anybody that donates to Input Mapper, uh, if you're a new user, you're still going to get your premium account. Um, but, you know, it's just uh, we've, we've met our budget for this month. And, you know, there's still time left in the month. So we're going to send that money on over to Be Benjamin. So uh, at the time of this video, let's see, uh, Input Mapper. Uh, our, what we've raised so far is 331.60. So we're going to take that. That's, I've transferred that out of there. So we're starting fresh. The PayPal account's empty. So anything you guys donate um, from now until I make the check-in video next week, uh, we're going to accumulate track and send that right on over to Benjamin. Um, because he's, uh, I think the, the three-year certificate that he's uh, purchasing, you know, to, that allows him to sign these drivers, I think it's like $1,000. So, uh, you know, it's not right for him to be paying that out of pocket. So we're going to help him out with that. Um, so you guys... Donate, give until it hurts, help the guy out. Um, and we're doing that because he do, I, don't, I don't think he's using PayPal um, directly. And even if he does, he doesn't get that much exposure being a driver. Um, there's no UI or you know any way for him to really expose uh, his payments or donation portal uh, that much. Um, also, if you want to, you know, support him directly, he has a patron. Um, I'll link that below. Um, but patron is weird how they take money. Uh, I haven't actually, he's the first person I've ever used patron with, and I don't fully understand how that works. So, uh, I'm going the PayPal route. Um, all right, but, uh, enough of that. A little about it, a little bit, in, bleh, 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 a little bit, bleh, 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 bleh back that up a little bit about input mapper 
Um, so, uh, I don't have a new version out yet. I am uh, holding off on a translation that should be coming uh, any day now um, that I'm missing. And I'll get that packaged in there and build a uh, copy of Input Mapper. Um, the new build is going to have the newest uh, alpha drivers that Benjamin has created. Um, they are right now Windows 10 64 bit only. Uh, at least the installer is um, that I'm packaging. Uh, I will have 32 bit Windows 10 in there shortly. Um, it's just, it's hard for me to test that package out because I don't have a 32 bit copy of Windows. Um, I do have a virtual machine, but since I don't have a 32 bit ISO or product key, I have no way to install a 32 bit Windows onto a virtual machine and test it out. So uh, it's a pain in the ass, but you know, they should. Side note, they should really give developers free copies of the operating systems for virtual machines, especially if they want them their software to be platform compatible, but whatever. Anyways, a um, couple things that I've been working on in Input Mapper is a keyboard and mouse input. Um, and that'll make it so people can take their keyboard and mouse and map that to a controller. And that's not something that's too new. I have, I did touch on that a little bit in Input Mapper 2.0 uh, beta. Um, it was pretty hackish, uh, didn't work too well. Um, but I've discovered a couple new uh, methods to go about doing that in Input Mapper um, 1.7. So uh, I'm going to take a, going to take you know, full use of you know the things that I've learned between now and. Uh, back when I wrote Input Mapper 2, uh, and uh, create a new new way to hook the mouse and everything that doesn't meet, that doesn't require you to trap it, uh, so you can use it normally and still capture a proper delta even if the mouse goes to the edge of the screen. So, yeah, there's a couple things that are uh, in the works as far as input devices. Um, another thing I'm working on still is the automatic profile switching for software. Um, I got, right now, there's not much UI. Uh, I'm still kind of putting together everything I want to do uh, with that. And as I mentioned before, uh, in, in contrast to previous versions of Input Mapper, it's not just going to track the executable file. It's also going to track the window name. Uh, so you can create wildcards and all that stuff. So you could even have a separate control profile for a certain website or something maybe. Uh, not just, you know, Google Chrome or Internet Explorer uh, specifically, so that's stuff that I'm working on. Um, like I said, I'm up against a deadline on a real-world project right now, so I'm not able to put too much time into Input Mapper. Um, hopefully the best I can hope for this week is to package a new installer and get that out to you guys. Uh, but other than that, probably, probably no new major features coming this week, so... Uh, just to keep you guys informed. All right, guys, uh, that'll do it for me for this week. I'll see you again next week.